Welcome to Tutorial 8. In this tutorial, we are going to develop a basic understanding of parameter estimation using GPSX. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to target variables that you are interested in fitting to data, select the model variable to be adjusted, and specify the form of the objective function. We are also going to explore other optimizer variables, such as termination criteria and number of data points. For this tutorial, we'll be creating a simple layout using the CN library, consisting of a single CSTR using the Mantis process model. Set the readily biodegradable substrate concentration to 200 grams COD per meters cubed. This variable can be found in initial conditions, initial concentration. Now that we've got the readily biodegradable substrate concentration set, let's specify the oxygen transfer and airflow. Right click on the CSTR and select Operational. Set Specify Oxygen Transfer By to Entering Airflow, and set the airflow into the aeration tank to 40,000 meters cubed per day. Next, let's set the date and time. On the menu bar, select Option, General Data, System, Input Parameters, Simulation Setup. Click the date and time at time 0, and let's set the date to 2010 6 15. We'll also change the communication interval to 0 0.01 days. Lastly, under the Consistency Check menu, switch off Show Process Warnings. And under Aeration Limit Settings menu, switch off Apply Aeration Limits. Save the model with the name Tutorial 8. And compile it by clicking on the Simulation button. Now that the model is compiled, let's create our output graphs. For this tutorial, we'll need to display the effluent, readily biodegradable substrate. This can be found in the CSTR's effluent stream, under State Variables, in the Output Variables menu. Set the graph's title, and use the limits 0 to 200 grams COD per meter cubed. With the graph set up, run a 0 0.25 day simulation with steady state turned off. We are now going to optimize two kinetic parameters in order to obtain the best fit between effluent soluble substrate data and simulation results. To do this, place the heterotrophic maximum specific growth rate and the readily biodegradable substrate half saturation coefficient on an input control tab. Both of these parameters can be found in the CSTR's input parameters kinetic dialog. For this tutorial, we're going to need some data. Navigate to the install directory of GPSX and enter the folder Layouts, 19 Tutorials, Tutorial 08, and copy and paste the Excel file to the directory where you saved your layout. Now that our model has some data points, let's run the simulation to display them. Try rerunning the simulation and manually changing the growth rate and half saturation parameters and try to minimize the difference between the simulation and measured data. OK, now that we know how to manually calibrate the model, let's automate the process of fine-tuning these parameters. It should be noted that you'll get much better results from this automatic calibration if you manually get the model as close as possible to the data. This will both help GPSX do a better job calibrating and will also help you determine the effects of the individual parameters on the simulation response before you optimize. To begin this process, click on the Input Control Properties button and change our independent variables to optimize. The min and max values will now define the bounds of these variables. 
Accept these changes and click on the modeling button. Now that we are back in the modeling view, click on the optimized drop down menu. Under type, select time series, and under objective function, select maximum likelihood. For more information on the maximum likelihood objective function, see the GPSX technical reference. Now click on the optimize button to switch to optimize mode. Remember, the mode you are in can be found on the status bar in the bottom right of the window. Now that we are in optimize mode, we need to identify the target variables. The menu items that were labeled output variables in edit mode are now labeled target variables. For this tutorial, we are going to use the effluent readily biodegradable substrate concentration as our target variable. Setting this can be done by right clicking on the CSTR and selecting target variables, state variables, and selecting readily biodegradable substrate. To quickly view what variables have been set as target variables, click on the Optimize drop-down menu and select Target Variables. This will display a list of the target variables that you've selected. With the target variable set, return to edit mode by clicking on the Optimize button. Save the model and recompile the simulation code. It should be noted that while in Optimize mode, you won't be able to select output variables to display on the output graph. To do this, you need to return to edit mode. Once the model has been recompiled with the optimizer controls and the appropriate target variable, return to modeling so that we can set some of the optimizer parameters. On the menu bar, click Options, General Data, System, Input Parameters, Optimizer. In this dialog, set the number of optimizer parameters to 2, followed by the number of data points. Typically, you would enter the number of rows in the data file. For this tutorial, enter 26 for the number of data points. Four different optimizer termination criteria can also be set. For this tutorial, the default is sufficient. Now switch the detailed statistical report parameter on. This setting will print the statistical analysis to the command window. Under the Maximum Likelihood subsection, switch the heteroscedasticity model on. The heteroscedasticity model is a power law variance model that accounts for non-consistent measurement variance. Click the heteroscedasticity parameters button and enter a value of 2 for the heteroscedasticity parameter. This value signifies that we are assuming that the measurements have a constant relative error. The heteroscedasticity parameter is the exponent used in the power law. In the confidence limits subsection of the optimizer form, switch the printing of confidence limits on. When this is on, the confidence limits will be provided for the parameter estimation in the command window at the end of the optimization. The confidence level for confidence limits by default is set to 0.95 which corresponds to 95% confidence limits. It should also be noted that when the printing of the confidence limits is switched on, the variance, covariance, and correlation matrices are also reported in the command window. The correlation matrix shows the correlation between the estimated parameters. In the portmanteau subsection of the optimizer form, switch the portmanteau test on weighted residuals on. The portmanteau test is a type of model adequacy test which checks for serial correlations in the residuals, the residuals being the difference between the measured values and the model predictions at each data point. If there are trends in the residuals, then the fitted model does not account for all the non-random variability in the data. Remember to accept the changes to the optimizer. Save and recompile the model. Click on the Optimize button on the toolbar to switch to Optimize mode. Set the stop time to 0.25 days and the communication interval to 0.01 days and start the simulation. You can open the command window before running the simulation 
but this will slow down the optimization process, so we will open it after. At each optimization iteration, GPSX plots the simulation results and displays the 10 most recent. The optimization is complete when the simulation time counter stops changing and the solution report is printed to the command window. The solution report includes the final parameter values and the results of the statistical tests. To open the command window, click on the simulation control drop down menu and click command window. Here you will find all the information on the optimization we just ran. And that's the basics of parameter estimation using GPSX. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in information on our other software products such as CapDetWorks for preliminary design and costing, ToxChem for industrial wastewater treatment modeling, or WattPro for drinking water treatment modeling, you can visit our website at www.hydromantis.com for further information.